is Tracy Lee Stum and welcome to another lesson of how to 3D street paint. Today I'm going to be walking you through a simple lesson on how to create a geometric chair that actually stands up off the ground. I'm going to go over layout and placement and rendering and shading so that you'll have a really fantastic image when you're finished with the lesson. So stick around and hope you enjoy it and I'll see you at the end. The first thing I'm going to do to create my chair is establish the seat, which is going to be a two foot by two foot square. And in order to find out where that is and where to lay it out, I create a center line with my string coming straight off of the viewing point. This square is roughly about five feet away from viewing point, more or less. And here you can see that I am putting in 12 inch increments on either side of that line. This way I can get a nice square shape for that seat. Now I've got the beginning of the chair seat. You can see it's a square and I'm making sure that I go over the lines so that they are visible from the viewing point because I'm going to be checking this drawing throughout the sketching period or the layout period and I want to make sure I'm able to see that just putting in the final line here, making sure that it's 24 inches, and then I will be ready to start putting in the legs. The next step in preparing the chair drawing is to create the legs that the chair stands on. So here you can see I'm using my string to create diagonal lines that go back to the viewing point. And as you can see, I'm also using a yardstick to get a nice straight line. So I've marked off a four inch leg that I wanna put on to the chair. And you'll see me putting in the inside line shortly after I finish this outside edge here. So now I'm putting in the other part of the leg, the other line of the leg, and as you can see I've measured off four inches there at the seat, and I will be creating the lines that actually go down to the viewing point with the string once I get everything marked off. The next thing I'm going to do is figure out the height of the legs and I'm looking at my drawing and estimating about 24 inches will be the measurement where the legs will stop. So you can see I'm marking that on the legs right now and I'm just going to draw a horizontal line across to get that measurement. And here's the start of our chair. So now I've got my seat and my front legs completed, and I'm feeling pretty good about that. I'm just measuring now where the back legs will actually hit the ground. So I've dropped a line down from the top of the seat. You can see there's two marks at the top, two white marks, four inches in from each corner. And bringing my string up to that mark, first I'm, I'm gonna do the corner, and then I'm gonna to go to the inside edge. There we go. So I'm marking that off. That's gonna be the back leg where that hits the ground. And now moving over to the other side, I'm going to do the same thing and make sure I get both legs marked off in the correct place for the perspective that we're using. So the next thing I'm going to do is create 
another four inch measurement. So I basically just marked off a little square there in the corner of each area of the seat. And that is going to be where the side of the leg, the front leg, actually will um, hit the chair in perspective. So you can see I'm bringing my string up to that point and now I'm going to draw a line down and that's actually the side, the inside facing side of that leg that we're going to see once it's in perspective. Now once I get those side measurements drawn in, I'm going to want to put in the bottom of the leg and where it hits the front portion that we drew and also the side portion that we drew. So you can see I'm finishing up both legs here, drawing the inside edge of both legs. And the way I find the bottom of that leg and where it actually sits on the ground is I draw a vertical line that's perpendicular to where we're standing. So imagine if there's a horizontal line running across the bottom of the painting near where we're standing. I'm going to draw a vertical line straight up. It's going to be parallel with that center string line and where you start at the uh, front of the leg and wherever it intersects with that second diagonal, which is the side of the leg, is where it stops. So it might look a little bit long there but it's actually correct. The next thing I'm going to work on with the chair is the back of the chair. So you can see I'm taking my string and creating a diagonal line from the very top of the square seat area, from the corners. I'm gonna put in both sides and this will be the basic shape of the back of the chair. You want to always trust your string and know that these lines, even though they look diagonal now, will actually look straight up and down when you view them through the camera lens. I've marked off the top of the chair where I think it might need to be, but I'm going back to where the camera is to double check that. And after checking it out, I figured out that the chair back needs to be a little bit bigger so I'm going to extend it with the string, which is great. You can just um, extend or shorten. Just follow that string line and everything's good to go. And um, here I am just working on that extra line. Or you can see how it's making the back of the chair look a little bit taller. So certainly it's a good idea to go back and check from the camera point uh, once in a while to make sure that the drawing is looking like the way you want it to look. Now here you can see I'm marking the top of my chair and I'm just going to draw a horizontal line directly across to get that nice crisp edge. And then eventually I'm going to put a return on the top of the chair so it looks like that back is thick. So here I am marking off, I'm measuring, I'm thinking that's probably going to be about five or six inches wide up there. Um, certainly as anamorphic images move away from the camera lens and the viewing point, things become 
much more condensed or compressed. So to compensate for that, you're going to want to make those types of uh, components a little bit wider. So instead of a two inch return at the top of that chair, I'm actually making a six inch return. And you can see it doesn't look very wide there. Um, that's because the camera, again, is compressing the image. So I would say if you're not working from a gridded drawing and you're just freehanding it like this, you should step back, look through the camera lens, check it out, see if it's wide enough for you, and you know adjust it and correct it as you need to while you're working. As you can see, I've put the back rails of the chair back support in, and I'm basically just using the four inch measurement on the back side of the seat. So you can see where the, the two side panels end, that's four inches from the corner. And that's the line that I actually use for the chair legs as well. So I'm using that for the back rails, and then I put a center rail in, which is equally four inches at the base where it meets the chair. And here's what I've got so far. Now, remembering how I mentioned that you should go back to the camera and check out the drawing just to make sure that you're happy with the dimensions, if they look good, I actually realized that the back of my chair was not tall enough. So I went back to the camera. Now I'm just extending those rail lines and moving the back of the chair up quite a few inches. Uh, I think I moved it up about six or seven inches. And here I've got a little bit taller back, which is much more pleasing to me. And now we're going to start adding color to our drawing. And the first thing I'm going to do is start blocking in my base colors. I've got a light red and a dark red. The light red is going to be for the areas where the highlights are going to be and the dark red is for the shadow areas. So imagine my light source is slightly behind the chair and up to the left, which means that any surface that's uh, facing up to the sky is actually going to be getting light. And since the light source is behind the chair slightly, I'm gonna make all the surfaces that are vertical looking at us slightly bit, a slight bit darker. Okay, so now I'm putting in the base coat. You can see I've got an interesting tool that I'm using. It's a piece of styrofoam that I get out of my box of chalks and when you fold it up and use it as a blending tool, it's terrific for getting a nice solid base. And I've also got another um, item in my toolkit which is really handy. It's a piece of laminated paper and the laminated edge is perfect for creating sharp edges on geometric drawings like this. So you can blend right up to it and it doesn't let any chalk get underneath, so you get a nice crisp edge when you're done. It's terrific. At this point, I realized that I did not put the sides of the rails on the back of the chair in, so I'm doing that right now. I'm taking my string and putting a diagonal line. It's not very wide. I don't want the chair rails to be super, super wide. So I'm keeping it kind of thin, just following that edge. And now I'm gonna be putting in the cast shadow lines from the chair rails onto the seat of the chair. So imagine the light is coming through those rails and this is where the shadow is gonna fall. So here I've added the light color where the light hits it, the sunlight hits the chair. Here's the dark color where the shadow will be. 
Here's the light color and the shadow is cast from the chair rail and the front of the chair, which is also vertical surface, gets the dark edge as well. And now I'm filling in the back legs. You can see I'm putting in the dark color And here's a blending technique that you might find is interesting for dark reds. I like to mix black and red together and uh, just equal amounts usually and you can get a nice dark color that way. Here I am adding some dark variations into the wood grain, let's say, of the chair and I'm certainly punching up where the top rail meets the side rails putting a little bit of detail in there. You can see I've done the shadowing also with the dark uh, red, which is the black and red together. And it's worked out really nicely. It's creating some nice drop lines going across the seat of that chair. And I've also added a fluorescent pink highlight on the uh, corner of the seat, on the upper left side of the seat. That actually helps accentuate the light somewhat. So you can see at the top, I'm adding more lines into the top of the chair rail there, and I'm using my string to make sure that the line work is going in the right direction. And um, just kind of creating a more shadowed looking area of that part of the chair. And here I am putting in the bright fluorescent pink. It's popping up that back rail area. It's starting to really come together and take shape. I've also put in some light there on the side of that rail because that would actually be getting sunlight. And um, on the left side, I put the dark color. So here is what we've got now. And um, we're ready to put some shadowing in underneath the chair, make it look like it's sitting down on the ground. So now I'm ready to put in some drop shadows to make that chair look like it's actually sitting on the ground. I'm putting in my diagonal lines from the base of the chair legs and just putting in some black or dark gray to give an estimation of a shadow. Shadowing really requires an entire lesson, so I'm just giving a rough here so you get an idea of how the chair would actually sit down on the ground with the diagonal shadows. And you will see the finished result in just a second here. I think it came out pretty nicely. Here's the finished piece. And next is the back view of the drawing looking towards the viewing point. Very interesting.